when legendary bike brand Colnago announces its first made in Italy gravel bike, cycling aficionados need to sit up and take note. They have long been at the forefront of performance and desirability. So what have they brought to the gravel party? This is the C68 Gravel. The goal of this bike, Colnago say, was not for it to be the fastest or the lightest or the most gravelly, but simply for it to be the best. Now that is a fairly lofty ambition, so let's see. I've said it before and I will no doubt say it again. Gravel means many things to many people. It might be bike packing across the Andes or racing flat out wearing aero socks. It might be just chilling, topless, looking for an IPA. For most of us though, it's probably elements of all three. But the fact is you can buy a gravel bike that's designed for these specific niches. So it's a huge category. And so what does best even mean? I had a long conversation with the head of R&D at Colnago, Davide Fumagalli, before making this video. And I asked him the same question. And his first response was actually to chuckle and say that that's exactly what the Colnago marketing department have been asking too. Which, frankly, is music to my ears because it's really good to know when a product has been designed to be more than just something to please the marketing department. He then went on to say that this is a bike that's been designed for riders who enjoy the process more than the goal. Principally, this is a bike that's been designed to be great to ride and not specifically the fastest or the gnarliest. Although, that said, he feels that a bike should feel fast in order to be great to ride. And so that also comes towards the top of the list as well. So, how then have they done it? Firstly, let's go back a step. Colnago, for those of you that don't know, is one of the oldest and most prestigious brands in cycling. Ernesto Colnago, the founder, was a rider turned mechanic, turned frame builder, turned visionary. He built bikes for Eddie Merckx, the greatest of all time. And then as the years went by and technology evolved, he managed to keep Colnago at the forefront of it. What's particularly relevant to us here in this video though is the C series of bikes, which have a long heritage of being handmade in Colnago's factory in Cambiago in Italy. The first was the C35, right back in 1989, and that had been designed in collaboration with Ferrari. Then came the C40, and that was the first production carbon Colnago, and actually it was also one of the first carbon bikes to enter the pro peloton and enter it did. To this day, it is still one of the most recognizable and frankly desirable bikes ever, raced by legendary teams like Lamprey, Rabobank, and Mappe. The following model, the C50, continued with great success, but then latterly, the 59, the 60, and the 64 gradually began to move away from their racing pedigree. The reality was Colnago had developed lighter and faster bikes to propel Tade Pogaccia and the like, and so with the C-Series, they say they were then able to pursue pure riding pleasure. Like I said, process, not goal. You might get to the finish line faster on a V4 RS, but you'll enjoy the ride more on a C68. The C68 Road was launched in 2022, but it was never meant to stand alone. So Conago say they already had well-formed plans for the all-road and the gravel models, but such was the demand for the C68 Road that the factory in Cambiago simply didn't have the capacity to keep up. So the reality is, this C68 Gravel has been in development now for four years. Oh. 
Like the C68 Road and all road models, this shares the same modular construction. So that's where the frame is actually made of six distinct parts that are then bonded together. Now, the reason for this, Colnago say, is that it gives them greater control over the production process. By making smaller parts, they can be made with greater consistency and also giving a higher quality part. And then they also say that it allows them to better define the ride characteristics. Unfortunately, this technique is also more costly because whereas on the earlier C-series bikes, I was learning that they could share the same tubes and lugs across the different sizes, here, each size of bike requires individual moulds for each of the six components that go up to making one frame. So it is more time consuming and it is more costly. Given that this bike shares the same modular construction as its stablemates, I did ask whether any of these sections could also be found on the C68 Road or All Road. But no, apparently every single part of this frame is made specific to be the C68 gravel. Taking the down tube as an example, this one is much bigger on the gravel bike compared to the others. And it also, given the demands of riding off-road, has thicker walls to the tube so it can increase the resilience against rock strikes and the like. But Colnago say that those increased walls didn't give the ride characteristics that they were after, so they changed the actual types of carbon fibres used until it did. And what are those characteristics then? Well, strength, clearly, as we've already heard, but then also I'd say it's probably more one of balance. So they wanted it to be stiff without being too stiff, light but without it then compromising other aspects of the bike. And then they also wanted it to be smooth and compliant, but again, that not being the focus, they said that with gravel tires, they didn't need to build in excessive flex into the frame. And what of those tyres? Because you can tell a lot about a bike from its tyre clearance, remember? Well, here it's 45 mil, which is wide, but not super wide. Now, I did ask Colnago why they'd arrived at this particular width, and they said that they felt in order to design a bike that would accept 50 mil tyres and above, they would need to make sacrifices to the handling and performance of the bike for more appropriate and typical gravel bike tyre widths. So like the ones I've got on here, 40 mil wide. When I asked Colnago what they thought made this bike the best, top of their list, they said, was actually the geometry of the bike. So the handling, how it feels to ride. But it's quite hard to pinpoint what that is when you simply look at a chart. So you could see that the wheelbase is slightly longer. And that's as a result in part due to this longer front center and also a slightly slacker head angle. But then it also, this longer front center, allows you to run a slightly shorter stem as well. And that keeps the agility and the responsiveness of the bike. None of those figures are extreme, far from it in fact. Instead, I think you could say they're simply refined. They tailored those classic Colnago characteristics for the demands of gravel. You might be wondering what Colnago know about riding off roads. A lot of you might assume they're a road brand, and that's fair given their pedigree and heritage. But the fact is, they know a lot about off road Some of the most successful cyclocross racers of all time have raced their bikes. Van Aert, Van Der Poel, that's both Mathieu and his dad, Adri. Sven Nies, Niels Alberts, Boom, Gronendal, even Roger de Vlaming. So between them, there are countless World Championship titles and World Cup victories. So whilst the idea of getting a Colnago covered in mud and dirt might seem abhorrent, the reality is it is right in their wheelhouse. In fact, the most famous Colnagos of all time are still covered in dirt in the Colnago Museum nearly 30 years after being raced to victory in Paris-Roubaix by Taffy, Ballerini, and museo. That is bloody cool. 
There are, of course, a stack of other really nice touches as well. The cockpit is a brand new gravel specific one piece. Now, the width remains consistent at 40 centimeters on the tops and 46 centimeters on the drops, but you can spec the stem length irrespective of the size of bikes. Can I say they're all built to order anyway? However, what's also a really nice touch is the fact that it's compatible with basically any other brand of bar and stem. So should you wish to fit an Envy or a Deda one to get exactly what you want, you can do. There is a threaded T47 bottom bracket, something that Colnago actually embraced a number of years ago. And the bike can be run with any electronic group set in a two by setup or any electronic or mechanical group set in a one by setup like I've got here. Weight, as I said earlier, was not a priority with this bike, but this one still comes in at just 8.3 kilos give or take a couple of grams here or there. Fumigali's own bike, actually, he said was just 7.9 kilos. And interestingly, he himself is no stranger to gravel, having won a medal at the first ever gravel world championships in the masters category, which I thought was pretty cool. And then finally, it's not something I often talk about in a first look video, but I feel like I have to here, the paint. Like, the finish on this bike is mwah, particularly this Colnago logo here, which is kind of cut into this thick pearlescent paint. It's understated and classy. Hit the like button if you agree with me. There is also a black version as well, which is equally classy, I think. So what's it actually like to ride there? I mean, we don't do reviews here on GCN, but given that this bike is all about feel, it seems wrong to not at least try and articulate what it's like to pedal it. And so I've obviously not had long on it. So these are first impressions only, but given that there's nothing on the geometry chart that's extreme, the bike just feels right. Everything is where it should be. So when you get out of the saddle, it feels right. When you're putting the power down, it feels right. On the road, it feels right. And then those little adjustments to the front center and the head angle mean that when things are a little bit more technical or faster or looser, you can ride the bike more aggressively. And then actually my perhaps biggest takeaway from this is the bike feels very quiet to ride, which is perhaps an odd thing to say, but a lot of carbon bikes are quite noisy. They rattle or they knock. Whereas this, it's like buttery, it's, it's like a ghost. And I think that's a good thing, 100%. Make of it what you will, but it's bloody smooth. So it's crunch time. Is this the best? I mean, firstly, you've got to say that the entry point to this range is still 7,250 euros. That's for a GRX 822 equipped bike. And so I think for some of you that would automatically discount it from being the best. It's a luxury item and so sadly could only ever be a dream. But if we leave that to one side, I'm still not sure I can answer that question. I mean, firstly, best is incredibly subjective. The best gravel bike for one rider might not be the best gravel bike for another. Plus, Colnago have supported us in making this video. They've brought us out to pristine Spanish gravel, taken us away from the bogs of England. And so actually some of you would probably automatically discount my opinion anyway. Added into that, I've only been able to ride the bike for a couple of hours so far. And I think to really truly find out if something's the best, you need to live with it with a good chunk of time. But I will say this, I unfortunately have to hand this bike back in a couple of hours, but I'm gonna be late because I don't want this ride to end.